Hello, everyone. Today we'll be talking about data and we'll be discussing relational databases and entity relationship diagrams and the entity relationship model. As we mentioned before, um, relational databases are called relational because um, they, are, they have relationships between tables that make up the database. So relational databases are in form of tables, that is, they are structured data. So they are structured data. and they have relationships. They come in a form of a table, that is, that has rows and columns. And on the rows, we have objects. Those objects could be customers, they could be students, employees, or they don't need to be humans. They can be um, transactions in a retail store, for example, or they could be uh, medical exams that were performed on certain patients in a hospital. So objects, they're called objects because they could be anything. Now, Now on the rows, we have, uh, on the columns, we have the descriptions of those objects. <clears throat> so they're also called features or attributes. That are going to describe the objects. So they can be, if for example, the object is a customer, then they can be the customer's description, such as their age, their address, their education, or the products and services that they purchased. So on the row, on the columns, we will have those descriptions and also they could be one important description that is the one that we're interested in. For example, if we are charged to determine whether we should give loan to the specific customer, um, then our um, class or decision
class or decision could be, um, yes or no. Let's say we should give him <clears throat> we should give him the loan or not. We would like to make this decision. So there is one important attribute, which is called the class or our decision in the table. But they're called relational because they have they have uh, connections in between the multiple tables. So we could say one table that's customers, we could have another one that's the employees, and we could have another one that is the products that we offer. And then, they will have a relationship because between the tables because the customers would be linked with the products table for example showing which customers are interested in which products so that's why it's called relationship the entity would be the customer or the employee and the relationship is which of those are related to each other. So we could link those tables Uh, through a specific attribute, usually called a key that would allow us to link one table with another. So what is the data model? We, let's say we have all this data the model would allow us to move from the information description that we have of what the user would like to accomplish to a precise description that can be implemented as a database or in a database management system. What is a database management system? So let's say we have all these tables that we talked about. The database management system will be the software which allows us to create the tables and say uh, store them and allows us to update them and search them. That is to send queries to the data and to receive reports or answers. So the database management system is a software that allows us to create our tables and to store them as well as to update them and delete them as needed. So what are the steps in developing a database? So let's say we are developing this database for a client or a customer. Then we need to determine what the customer wants. That is, what are their requirements? Uh, once we know what they want, 
we could do a conceptual design of the database. That is, we could, let's say, sketch on paper or make a, a flowchart or a drawing on, uh, on the computer, determining uh, logically uh, what our tables are and how they could be linked together. So first, we will throw the basic concepts of what the customer requirements are. And let's say what kind of tables we would like to have to implement these requirements. And then we will create the logical database design. That is, we will create those tables and link them together as, as necessary. This is also called a schema. The schema that has the entities and the relationships between them for our database. And finally, we would do implement the actual database. That is, we would create the tables and store them in the, the software relational database management system. And the last uh, part here from the development is who would be using our database, what it would be applied for, and then uh, any security on the database. So that is, um, we need to ensure that the server where the database system is residing is <clears throat> patched, it's up to date on software and let's say it has firewalls and antivirus programs and um and we are regularly creating backups of the data because the data could be lost. And this will be a big loss for our business if we lose our data. So we need to make sure we take backups of this data on a regular basis. So we'll take the backups and store them. Usually daily is a good practice to back up the data. So conceptual design, like we mentioned here, um, we need to determine what are the entities in our data and what are the relationships between those entities. So what is an entity? Like we said, the objects could be all of these things here, customers, students, employees, transactions. This, this is either human. They could be other things like transactions, what things we purchased in a grocery store bread, milk, fruits, we purchase these things. That goes as one role in the database, that's called a transaction. Or if there are patients in a hospital and certain medical exams were performed on them, 
we could have a table of exams, medical exams that are performed at this particular hospital. We could have a table of products that we offer or services. All of these things would be the entities. And then we want to have a relationship between them. That is, let's say the customer is table is related to the products table because customers purchase products and they're interested in those products. The doctor's table is related to the medical exams table. This particular doctor specializes in performing radiology exams. The other one is just physician performs physical exams. And so the doctor table is linked to the medical exam table. So what information about these entities and relationships we could store in the database? What are the integrity constraints or business rules that hold? So business rules, obviously let's, for example, if these are medical uh, exams, we want to keep this data private, right? The uh, customers <coughs> are care, I mean, patients care about their medical records. So we, business rules would include keeping the, the patient's privacy. <coughs> For example, <clears throat> database schema is the actual model which shows what are the entities and what are the relationships. So between them, that is, we could draw a diagram. For example, the entities would be looking like squares and um, the the relationship would look like arrows that points to between the squares. So that will allow us to visually show the schema. Once we have this diagram, we can map it into the actual um, implementation of the database into the database management system. So for example, our flow chart in our diagram would look like this. <clears throat> the entity is right here the, in the rectangle. The employee is the entity. And then these circles here, also let's say this is an object, the employee and the circles are the attributes or the descriptions of this object. So the employee has a social security number, it has a name, it has a location. So those are the descriptions. Which attribute has domain? <clears throat> what is the domain? So the domain will be the, the particular range of values that this uh, attribute can take. For example, social security number is a nine, is it nine digit number that is integer, that is positive. This is the domain of this particular uh, attribute. 
social security number cannot be negative um, or contain letters or strings. It has to be a positive number that is in, has nine digits. So this is the domain of this particular attribute. An entity set is a collection. So the set is a collection of items or elements. So a set of entities will be a collection of entities which are similar to each other. So for example, all employees Um, an entity set allows us to explore the is a relationship um, because particular person is a or is an employee or particular person is a manager which is also an employee so that's why we say hierarchies because Manager could be higher than the rest of the employees in our hierarchy, but it is also an employee. So there is a relationship applies here. So the set, this kind of entity set will have a key. What is a key? Key would be a unique value, such as customer ID, or student ID, or product ID, that allows us to identify this particular object to be this object. And because it's unique, the key can be used to link the tables together. So we can have a primary key or a secondary key. And that will help us to uh, connect the tables. So this is the table of managers. This is the table of employees. This part, and <clears throat> this is the table of products. So the e Let's say this particular manager is responsible for managing products in table A, while the other one manages products in table B. We could link the manager to those tables, or we could link the customers to the products that they purchase or are interested in. Here is how an entity relationship diagram looks like. this figure right here we can see over here is the entity department the primary key or the id is in here that allows us to link this table to another table so the the department manages the project 
the relationship between this table and this table is shown with an arrow that connects one with the other. So we have the entity, the name of the entity and particular ID or key. And then the relationships are shown by linking the tables together on the visual, the visual diagram here. So the entity relationship diagram will identify entities, attributes, and their relationships to construct a model. Usually we would have a one table for each entity. The Like we said, the attributes or the descriptions of these entities are on the columns. And the relationship will show with a line between those tables. So how to find an entity? We already gave a couple of examples earlier. We gave these examples here customers, students, employees, for humans, and then for non-humans, transactions, medical exams, products. But we have here more examples. So person, place, item, or event could be the object about which we are storing the information. The entity would look like this on our entity relationship diagram. It is a rectangle that has the name of the entity on the top. Mm -hmm. Not sure why this is showing up twice. Then. So the entity is tangible. For example, it could be customer product or intangible, an order or account. So the entities are nouns and they're singular. So if we are to obtain a description from our customer about what they want us to implement, then they're gonna be some text or some sound or description that they gave us. We would look in there and we could do this automatically through some natural language processing software. Um, we could find those nouns and in the description, to determine What are the nouns? And those would be our entities. How about the attribute? If we look for attributes in the description, how do we find those? So the attributes will describe or identify the entity. It will be some property or feature of the entity. That's why we call them also features.
for descriptions. So the attribute is a descriptor. Attribute is a descriptor whose values are associated with an individual entity. So for example, if the entity is an employee or a student or a customer, he would have such descriptions as the name, first name, last name, date of birth, major. It could be the income that it has, the area code, zip code, the location where they live, what what if it is a student what ma major it is what courses they like to take if it is a customer what products and services they would like to purchase so if we are to look automatically through the description the customer gave us then this is what we would be looking phrases or adjectives How about the relationship? How do we find the relationship between two entities? So the relationship is an association between the entities. For example, certain employees are assigned to certain projects. In that case, we will be looking for verbs if we were to use our NLP natural language processing software. We will be looking for verbs that can connect two or more entities together. Cardinality is the number of occurrences on, on the entity. They are represented with a line that connects two or more entities. So the relationship could be one-to-one -one relationship. It could be one-to-many relationship. For example, one-to-many is uh, one customer is interested in several products. So for customer to products relationship would be one to many. And this is how we um, show those on the diagram. When it's one to many, on the one side it has one line, but on the other side it has many lines. Here is how they look like visually. Cardinality, like we said, is the number of occurrences. So we have mandatory one, mandatory many. Optional one and optional many. Here are a few more example flowcharts here. We have employees, the relationship between employees and the departments. 
employees is one entity. It has its features or descriptions here. Those are social security name and location. The departments is another entity. So these, once we start implementing these in our relationship database, uh, I mean, in our database management system, we would create one table for employees and another table for departments. And then we can link those tables because the employee works in a specific department. So the relationship between the employees and the departments is uh, named works in. The department's table has its own descriptions. For example, the ID of the department, the name of the department, the budget of the department. Like we said, they could be higher, they, we, we could have hierarchies. Let's say the manager is higher than the employee and certain manager supervises several employees, but so the employees is subordinate to the supervisor. And the, the relationship between the employee and the supervisor is that certain employee reports to specific supervisor. So the relationship is really associations amongst two or more entities. Relationships set would be a collection of similar relationships. So N, we could call it an N, N relationship. So the set relates to N entities. That is, the set contains N, D, D, one, two, three, four, up to N. Um, the set could have several relationships. Here is how we would create the entity relationship diagrams. This is a notation called Chen, Peter Chen notation. We have here the student and the professor. Those are the two entities. And then the relationship is one to many. You can see N here and these two lines. So what is the relationship is that the student takes classes with the professor. And then for the student table and the professor table, we have those attributes or descriptions of these particular tables. So for the student, we have the student ID, the major, the student name. For the professor, we could have uh, the classes that they teach and again, their name or the department that they work in. What is the key? Like we said, that's a unique identifier, such as student ID or customer ID. 
So it would uniquely identify the instant an instance of an entity. In our notation, when we're creating these ER diagrams, when there is a key like this, it will be underlined. So it is represented by underlining the name of the attribute. So student ID is the key or the primary key. So the key is a unique number. Let's say social security number. Each person has its own unique social security number. That is, there can't be two persons with the same social security number. So we consider the works in the relationship. The employee can work in many departments. That's why you have those two stars here. It can work in many departments. Like we said, there are these four types of relationships, one-to-one, -one. each employee would be connected to only one department, one-to-many, the employee, let's say this one, is connected to two different departments or it can be connected to more than that. Main to one is the opposite of what we just said. Let's say main departments connect to this one employee right here. Main to main. is when there are multiple links between both of entities. Participation constraints. Participation constraints would be, for example, that participation of departments in the manage in the managers. Okay, managers is the relationship. is said to be total versus partial. So every department entity must appear in an instance of the relationship works in. So this is called total uh, participation versus partial participation. So if every department must appear, then it is called total. Total participation.
and every employee must be in a department. Okay, so here we have the employees, their descriptions, and the social security number, name, and location. Here we have the departments and their descriptions, department ID, department name, budget of the department. So the department would manage a particular employee while the employee works in the department, the departments. So there could be participation restraint, uh, constraints. One is total participation versus part of partial participation. And we can give some example here. So finalized, finalized business rules must be bidirectional. So the sales representative wants to write many invoices, but each invoice needs to be written by one sales representative. So we could have a sales rep to invoice a relationship. The sales rep writes the invoice. So it is a one uh the the relationship is shown here by connecting the sales rep to the invoice. Now each sales rep must be assigned to many departments. So here we have the assigned to relationship. So these are constraints. If we say they must do this or the other thing, then we're creating a constraint. So the rep must write the invoices. The next time we will be working on this exercise here, active learning exercise. So in this exercise, we will determine the participation constraints for a particular business or the rules that this business uh, have. So we will be working with the group on this exercise. Uh, in this exercise next time. Okay, so today we have discussed the entity relationship diagrams. We have seen example diagrams and explain the entities, uh, how they visually appear in a form of rectangle. The relationship between them is shown with a line and their properties 
or attributes features in strong circles. So, we also mentioned that once we create our logical design, we can move to implementation. Or physical design and finally secure the database and take backups. So next time we will continue with some um, active learning exercises to practice setting up constraints on our on our database. So this is all for, for this lecture. It's slides zero through 17 from this PowerPoint.